Good morning. So what we are going to be doing today is we are going to be taking notes on something called normal distribution. And normal distribution is a part of statistics that, that you'll talk about whenever you talk about a set of data. Because normal distribution shows different information about, say you're looking at test scores, you're looking at average heights, weights, basketball stats, things like this, normal distribution can come into play. But to do that, we need to think of some other terms first. The first term being, the mean and the mean as we know is our average and it's the average in a set of data so it's your average of a set of data and the mean goes by this little symbol here that means the mean the next thing might be a little bit new to you and it's called the standard deviation. And a standard deviation is a measure of how spread out. <laughs> okay, that's sorry. Of how spread out data is. So if we're talking about test scores, maybe the lowest score was zero and the highest score was 100. That would be a big standard deviation. If the lowest score was a 50 and the highest score was a 70, that would be a small standard deviation. So it shows how spread out your data is. This is shown by this little symbol here. That means standard deviation. And to find normal distribution, you need both of these things. So what is normal distribution? Distribution. So normal distribution is basically it shows both what is the medium of mean of your data and what does it look like. This can also be referred to as a bell curve. And the reason some people call it a bell curve is because that's what it looks like. So we're going to draw it. So I'm going to first start by drawing a line. And then I'm going to draw a bell. And let's pretend it's symmetrical on both sides. The reason being is because there's a couple of properties that go with it. So before I discuss those, I'm going to draw a line in the center. We're going to use it later. And then I'm going to draw three lines to the right of it and three lines to the left of it. This is just a blank normal distribution curve that we're going to talk about in a second. But before I talk about it, I want to talk about the properties of it. So the first thing is that there's symmetry at the center. And remember, symmetry is when you fold it in half, each side is equal. And normal distribution is talking about percents. So if there's symmetry at the center, and we're talking about the percents that something's going on with, that means that 50% of the data is less than or greater than the mean. So 50% of your data is on this side and 50% of your data is on this side. So it's symmetrical at the center. And because the mean is 50% less than the mean and greater than the mean, our third property of a normal distribution curve is the mean is the same thing as the median and remember, the median is the middle. And it's also the same thing as the mode. And the mode is the most, that top piece. So our normal distribution curve has all of these things that go with it. 
So I said earlier that we needed to know the mean and the standard deviation. Well, we just said that the mean equals the median, which equals the mode. So the mean goes in your center. That is your mean. And what are these little things? They're how spread out our data is. So that's where our standard deviation would go. So this is one standard deviation. This is two standard deviations. This is three standard deviations away. You might also sometimes see people put SD instead of the little standard deviation symbol. So that's to the right, but it's the same thing to the left as well. I'm just gonna put negative because it'll make a little bit sense later when I'm putting negative for these. So for the left, this is one standard deviation. This is two standard deviations. And this is three standard deviations. So we use this to figure out what our curve looks like. In our normal distribution curves, the percentages are always the same. It's the mean and the standard deviations that change. And because the percentages are always the same, there's this really cool thing called the empirical rule. Empirical, there we go, rule. And the empirical rule is true for whatever curve you're talking about. So we're first going to start, I'm going to use gray, with 68% of our data. So 68% of your data is within one standard deviation. So that means from negative one to positive one, is 68% of your data. So from here to there, 68% of the what you're talking about lies within that. The next one is 95%. And 95% of your data is within two and I'm going to put SD for standard deviation, just so we remember they're the same thing. So from negative two to positive two, so from here to here, is 95% of your data. And notice how there's more data because you're including more of your curve. The last part of our empirical rule is 99.7% of our data is within three standard deviations. So from our negative three to our positive three, I'm just making this go up so I can write it up here, is 99.7% of our data. You might be like, well, miss. Isn't everything out of 100%? You are correct. These little things, these tails here, they technically go on forever. So the entire bell curve is out of 100%, but we want to deal with the majority of our data, which is why the empirical rule focuses on these first three standard deviations away. So let's look a little closer at them. So if you have room, keep going it, but I'm gonna change that page. So let's look at an example and try to see if we can figure it out. So for our first example, we're gonna have the mean be 165 and the standard deviation be seven. So I'm gonna make my curve I tried to make it look as belly as I could. So this is my curve. And again, they all look the same. So I'd have the line down the middle and then I'd have three going to the right and they are evenly spread apart and three 
little ticks going to the left and they're evenly spread apart. Well, we're going to now break this curve down as much as we can. And the first thing we need to do is label what we have. So we know our mean equals our median equals our mode. So this 165, that is the score that most people have gotten. So it's in the very middle of whatever we're talking about. Now, how do we find these things? Well, we know that this was plus one standard deviation away. And my standard deviation was seven. So I'm going to add seven to get my plus one standard deviation. And that would give me 172. This is plus two standard deviations. So I'm going to do seven plus seven. I'm adding it twice. And that would give me 179. This is plus three standard deviations. So one, two, I need to add one more standard deviation. And it would be 186 is plus three standard deviations away. We could do the same thing the opposite way. And remember how I put minuses? Well, that's because we're going to the left. So if I added going to the right, if I want net minus one standard deviation, I would subtract seven and I'd get 158. If I want minus two, I subtract seven twice and I'd get 151. If I want minus three standard deviations away, I subtract three sevens and I would get 144. So that is how you fill out the bottom of your curve. So the bottom of your curve is what changes. We're going to do some calculations to fill out these percentages to make our lives easier. If you write nothing else down, write what we're doing here because the percentages will never change. So no matter what you're doing, if you're doing a worksheet, if you're doing a test, a quiz, if you're later on in life doing some really cool stuff with data, you can use the exact same percentages we're calculating right now. So I'm gonna rewrite my empirical rule just so I remember it. So I know one standard deviation away was 68%. I knew two standard deviations was 95%. And I knew three standard deviations was 99.7%. And I'm putting them down here for a reason. That reason being is because, okay, cool. But I only know about these in-betweens. I know about this. I know about this, and I know about this. Well, what if I wanted to know from here to here? Or what if I wanted to know from here to here? There's a way we can figure that out. So I'm gonna separate these and we're gonna find out what each chunk is. And it looks like it's a lot to figure out, but we need to remember that it's symmetrical. So once we find this side, we know this side. So we're going to start with the middle. We know from here to here is 68. Well, I want to know half of it. So to get half of it, I divide by two. So I'm going to do, I'm going to write my calculations over here just so, and I'm going to do them in different colors. So I'm going to do 68 divided by two. And that gives me 34. I'm done. I know this is 34% and this is 34%. That first one's easy. Now it gets a little bit trickier. So I want to know this part next. Okay. Well, I know from here to here is 95. So I'm going to divide 95 by 2. And I get 47.5. Okay, cool. So that means from here to here is 47.5. But I want to know here to here. 
So I get rid of that 34. So I'm getting rid of what I already know. And that would give me 13.5. And remember what we had on one side, we can easily put on the other because it's symmetrical. Well, let's see if we can do the same process. So for this part, I know from here to here is 99.7. And I want to know half of that. So I have 99.7 divided by two, which I do not know off the top of my head, which means you all are going on an adventure with me. I'm gonna stop for a second so I can put it in my calculator. So 99.7, remember, don't be afraid of calculators. They are very, very helpful. It would give us 49.85. So let me share again. So 49.85 would be from here to here. But we want to get rid of this part. Well, we know what this part is. It's that 47.5. And we can subtract that. And it would give us 2.35. And what we have on one side, we can put on the other. But miss, what about these? We don't know how much that is, but we do. Remember, the entire thing is out of 100%. So we would do 100 divided by 2, which we know is 50. And that would give us from here to here. And then we want to get rid of this part. And we know that these three we would subtract that 49.85 and we would get 0.15. And what we have on one side, we have on the other. So as much as that was a bunch of work, these percentages are always going to be the same. And these percentages are useful. So say I want, sorry, say I wanted to know something like, okay, I had all these people take this IQ test and this was the number. I wanna know what was the percent between 165 and 172. So what percentage of people got between those two numbers? I can easily just look up here and be like, okay, oh, 34, bam, I have my answer. All right, well, what about if I wanted to know people that did like really well? What if I wanted to know people that got greater than 172? You can figure that out easily too. So I know 172 and up, I would have 13.5 and I'd add that 2.35 and I'd add that 0.15. And that would give me, I know there was 16% of people that got more than 172 as a score. So having these broken down, make it really easy to figure out what exactly you want to know. And these percentages are always the same. The only thing that changes depends on the context of your problem. So what is the mean? What is the standard deviation? Which is why the empirical rule is so super cool. So make sure we're gonna do some playing around with this. So make sure if nothing else, you have this written down, it's super important. And ask any questions if you have any, we're gonna put this into some more context and have some fun with it.